Christ is the one that's going to... So, so let me ask you, bro. Do you believe in the Bible? Uh, it's a hard question for me. Okay. Personally. Okay. Let's talk about that. So why... So what weak part... Like, there's always something that, in a person's mind that causes them to have doubt about something, right? Mm. So what's that thing in your mind that causes you to have doubt when it comes to the Bible? Uh, I just believe if there's this God, then there might be other gods. There's a whole lot of shit going on. That there might be other gods. Like yeah. what? Describe it. You know, like India got their shit going on. Okay. Buddhists. Okay. So, you don't, to me personally, I don't know who real, who not real. What's that? Is the one true God that sets up and destroys nations is the true one true God of Israel. All the other gods are this. Read that. Psalm chapter 96 verse 5 uh -huh. For all the gods of the nations are idols What is an idol? Uh, what is idol? What somebody is that you look up to No, no, no like, so, my bad. No, 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 you good, you good uh, okay. So an idol, what the Bible is talking about is a false yeah, god yeah, Right? Yeah, so if they have created gods for themselves that are not real yeah. You understand? Uh -huh. Because guess what? We are the chosen people of Israel, so we are the people of the book. We are the people that this covenant, all this, uh, the, the kingdom of heaven, all these things belong to. Mm -hmm. Don't you think the other nations want to have yeah. something like that? Don't you think the other nations want to have something special to teach their children about? So that's what they do. Their gods are imaginary friends. They're not real. Read that again. For all the gods of the nation. So all the gods of the other nations, Vishnu, Krishna, Allah. Uh, give me some other ones. What, uh, uh, Buddha. Buddha. All of that. Yeah. God is saying all of that right there the has, has the Kaaba stone. All of that has no effect on anything. It's not real. The only thing that is real is you and your belief in it. That's why God will reject you if you do believe in those things. For example, you believe in, you ever celebrated Christmas? Yeah. Hey, read Psalm 115. Yeah, Psalms 115. What's read that. Verse 4. Verse 4. Psalms chapter 115 and verse 4. Uh -huh. Their idols are silver and gold. Their idols are things that they make with their hands. Objects. Read. The work of men's hands. Uh -huh. They have mouths, but they speak not. Uh -huh. So they have mouths, but they speak not. These are statues that people bow down and worship. These are uh, Kaaba stones that people bow down and worship. Read. Eyes have they, but they see not. Why? Because these things were made by men. Read. They have ears, but they hear not. Uh -huh. Noses have they, but they smell not. Uh -huh. They have hands, but they handle not. Uh -huh. Feet have they, but they walk not. Why, what is it saying? They're not real. They're not alive. They cannot come up and save you from anything. Nope. Nor can they do anything to you other than separate you from God for you believing in it. Right. Read. Neither speak they through their throat. That they make them all like unto them. Uh -huh. So is everyone that trusted in him. Exactly. So it says these things aren't real just like the people that trust in them. God says you're not real if you believe in these idols. What are we supposed to do with these idols? For example, you, do you have like a cross or a Christian cross or an ankh or any of those types of things? Because we have to remember our God, our God. The God, one true God of Israel destroyed the Egyptians, which was the greatest nation that ever lived, right? And he destroyed them, and he destroyed, and he made a mockery of all their gods. He said, okay, so since y'all believe in the alligator God, I'm going to turn the blood into, I'm going to turn the water into blood. Since y'all believe in this God, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to see if that God can save you. None of them gods can save them. You understand? So we can't be trusting in the gods of the other nations. Let me, tell me. What do you think some of the gods of the other nations are? Give me that Revelations 1, 4, 14. 1 and 1, actually. What's one of the biggest gods? On, what's the biggest god that the other nations worship today? Uh, Globally. That's the second biggest. Allah is the second biggest. What's the number one biggest? Jesus I mean, Christ, God. That, that, the white image of Jesus Christ. Oh, here we go. Oh. The white image of Jesus Christ is the god, is the idol that is worshipped today. Now, you might, you might be like, that sounds weird because, you know what I'm saying, like, Jesus is Jesus, right? But let's go ahead and see the difference that God shows us. Show that, Deuteronomy 1 and 1, read that. 
I mean, uh, Revelation. Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 1. Uh -huh. The revelation of Jesus Christ. What does Christ look like? Elias, so you don't know what Christ looks like. Okay, we're going to show you. Give me that. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So we're going to play strikeout, right? His head and his hairs were white like wool. Which you know what wool is? Yeah. Wool is like sheep's hair, yeah. right? So wool is a texture. White is a color, right? So right here, you see white woolly hair, don't you? Do you, do you see it over here? So who is this guy? That's strike one on this guy, right? All right, but this guy's in all the churches. Read that. As white as snow. Uh-huh, so the hair on his head and the hair on his face was white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Okay, strike number two. Who has the whites of their eyes red? This one or this one? This one right here. Okay, that's, so that's strike two. Let's get, let's get strike three, read that. And his feet like unto fine bread. So your feet, I'm guessing, are the same color as your legs, same color as your stomach, same color as your arms and your face, right? Exactly. So his feet are gonna, the color of his feet are gonna be described. Read that again. And his feet, uh -huh. like unto fine brass. Fine brass is this color right here. That's the color of fine brass. Now let's find out, let's get more specific about the fine brass. Read. As if uh -huh. they burned in a furnace. So if you, if you burn something that's white in an oven and you burn it, what color is it going to turn to? to black exactly right. so if you take something that's already brown and you describe it as if it had burned in a furnace guess what color that's going to be black black, black. Right. right so read that again as excuse me One, and this be like unto fine brass fine brass as if they burned in a furnace as if they burned in a furnace so guess what which one is black black this one here or this one here Okay, so which one is the biblical depiction of Jesus the Christ? Bring it up. To the left, right? So who is this? Huh. Give me that 2 Corinthians. <laughs> Give me that 2 Corinthians chapter, uh, you know what I want. So, so Elias, we have to understand that the reason why we don't believe in the Bible the way we're supposed to is because we've been painted a false image right. of right. our Savior, right. of our hero. That's right. This is a lie. This right here is the mark of the beast. This is actually Lucifer. This is Satan. I ain't gonna say it's, this is Satan right here. Read that. Second Corinthians chapter eleven verse four. Uh huh. For if he that cometh preaches verse three. Start at verse three. Verse three. Uh huh. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve. So the serpent in the Garden of Eden tricked Eve into following after his ways rather than following after her husband. Just like today, we have feminism, right? We have all of these different things that tr trick the women into not following their men, and you wonder why they're not married today, right? So just like Eve was deceived by the serpent in the garden, we get deceived by Satan and this fake white image of Jesus to believe in their ways rather than what the Bible actually says we're supposed to do. Right. Read that. Through his subtlety, Eve was tricked by his subtlety. He was a serpent, not in physical, but in his mind. Fork tongue. Lies. Read. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity. How does our mind get corrupted? Should be corrupted from the simplicity. From the simplicity 
that is in Christ. It's very simple to understand that Christ is a black man from the tribe of Judah. Because that's, right. that's what the Bible says. That's simple. You know what's complex and difficult to understand? How the Bible says he's black, but then they gave us a white image of Jesus. That's, that's complicated. That's the forked tongue. That's the lie. That's the idol. That's the idolatry right there. Read. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus. Who came preaching another Jesus, Elias? Who came? Did we have this? Did we have this back in the time of Moses? I mean, did, I mean, excuse me. Did we have this back in the time of Moses? All right. So when did this come? This came during the Renaissance period, the 1400s. Bring it out. You understand? The Renaissance means rebirth, rebirth of a nation. Because guess what? The white man they came from cave hill, caves and hillsides of Georgia, Russia, right? Europe. That's where they came from. How do you come from? The caves and hillsides of, of Georgia, Russia, to being rulers of the earth. Here we go. There had to be a resurgence or a renaissance that happened. You understand? And that's when they said, you know what? We could never completely take over the world if, if everybody knows that God is, if God is a black man. That's right. Christ is a black man. The angels are black. And the Jews are black. So what do we need to do? We need to become God. We need to become the angels. We need to become Christ. And we need to become the what? the Jews. That's why they're out there in our land right now. That's what we have to understand. This is the biggest trick that ever played up that was ever played upon. Read that. Whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit. See, when you when you when you receive this, you receive another spirit. Because this right here said this one right here says I came to save my people and my people by my my people alone. The 12 tribes of Israel. This guy says God loves everybody, which is not in the Bible, right? So that's a different spirit. Different spirit meaning a different doctrine. That's why you see the Christian church, they're more feminine. The men are more feminine. Let's see what the doctrine is. Get that uh, Proverbs 4 and verse 2. Let's see what the doctrine is. So we have to understand that they came with another Christ, which brought another spirit and another doctrine or philosophy of the Bible that's not in the Bible. That's why you don't believe. And I got questions. I want, I want, I want to find out what your questions are. Read that. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 2. Uh -huh. For I give you good doctrine. God, Christ said, I give you good doctrine. So what is the doctrine? Read. Forsake ye not my law. Go back. So guess what? Christ gave us the good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. Right. How many people have you seen shoot? How many black people have you seen shoot each other down on the streets? How many have we lost because of thou shalt, because we can't keep the law? Thou shalt not kill. That's right. How many people have we lost because of that? How many how many abortions have happened from the in the black community because we broke the law? Thou shalt not commit adultery, meaning having sex with people you're not married to. Right. How many unwanted births and families that are not ready to raise a child have we created because we broke God's laws? Right. That's the key. You ever taught your nation? You understand? What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is